Hello everyone, and welcome back here to our session on uh, linear ODEs. Uh, in the last video, we have seen that the matrix exponential approach basically delivers us the solution to our uh, linear ODE with n states, which are summarized in a vector x of t. And we have seen that this uh, ended up basically in an infinite series in order to represent this matrix exponential. And today in this video, I would like to show you at least for a limited application case to show you how we can actually solve this in a more easier way. And for this, we will basically start first with a simple assumption where we assume that our A is a diagonal matrix. So diag with elements lambda one with lambda n. So basically we would have a matrix in the form lambda one until lambda n, and these are zero block matrices. And if we assume that we have a system A, so this A which we see here in our model or in our solution, which can be represented by this diagonal matrix, then the calculation of the matrix exponential would become actually quite simple because E AT, we set is the sum of k being 0 to infinity of t to the power of k divided by k faculty. And now we insert this a here. So we would have lambda 1 until lambda n with the zeros to the power of k. And if we have a close look at this expression, so that basically means that we can take this, this fraction or this entire series expression and basically calculate it independently to all these lambdas here in the, uh, on the main diagonal, because if you calculate this diagonal matrix to the power of k, it will be still a diagonal matrix. And what we receive from this would be actually just the representation of the normal scalar exponential series, but n times on this diagonal matrix. So what we become, what we receive, is basically e to the power lambda one times t until e to the power lambda n times t, here with a zero block, here with a zero block. And we can close that matrix. So this would be the most simple case because in this uh, special case, so it's only a special case, not a general case, but a very special case, if we have a matrix A in this diagonal form, then our matrix exponential can be basically simplified as the scalar exponential functions on the main diagonal. However, this is a special case. Normally this does not apply to general A's. And it is also a somehow simple case because what does that mean basically is uh, that the states, so our right hand side here on the state equation or state derivative equation, that they would be completely independent from each other because we have these zeros here on the non-diagonal elements. So this would be somehow uh, the combination of n decoupled linear systems where there is no coupling between the different states. However, the question is, can we utilize this approach, this uh, simplification approach of the special case also to A's where A is not a diagonal matrix? And the answer is yes, we can, at least for some matrices which are diagonalizable. So assume that A is a diagonalizable matrix, then we can rewrite this as D, a diagonal matrix, as P inverse times A times P, so A is a diagonalizable A, and this would then result in lambda 1 until lambda n, 0, 0. And this matrix P here, this transformation matrix, is basically a matrix with the eigenvectors v1 until vn of a. 
And P inverse then obviously is the inverse of this uh, matrix composed out of the eigenvectors of A. So V1 is the first eigenvector of A and Vn is the nth eigenvector of A. From this we can then also already derive that, that this diagonalization does only apply to such matrices A to such systems represented by the system matrix A where the eigenvectors are actually linear independent. Because if they would not be linear independent, then we could not calculate P inverse, which we need in order to apply to calculate this transform. So therefore the approach which we will discuss in the following is also not applicable to all linear state space systems, but at least to a much larger chair where the system matrix A is diagonalizable. So very important. If we assume that A is diagonalizable, it has n linear eigenvectors and we can calculate P inverse and P for this transformation matrix, then we can basically use this transformation together with our matrix exponential approach and find an expression for EAT with this diagonalizable approach by basically inverting or reverting, not inverting, but reverting this transformation and what we get is E A T is equal to P times E to the power of D T times P inverse. So basically P times this matrix E lambda 1 times T, E lambda n times T 0, 0 times P inverse. So therefore this would be the generalization of this approach where we need to consider that we first need to transform this matrix A into its diagonal form and then for the solution of the matrix exponential we basically need to revert that and to re-transform uh, it into the normal space by P and P inverse from the left hand and from the right hand side. Right? So this would deliver us a closed form solution for A's which are diagonalizable. So let's have a little example. A very simple example. So where x dot of t is equal to minus 1, 1, 0, 1 times x of t, right? So this is then here our a. And what we can see from this a is it has a triangular form. So we know that on the main diagonal we have the two eigenvalues of this matrix which are minus one and one. So we can directly derive lambda one, lambda two being minus one and one. And as these two eigenvalues are distinctly different from each other, we also know that we will have two different eigenvectors and therefore we will definitely have a diagonalizable A matrix here. If you calculate the eigenvectors, I don't do it here manually to save some time. What we will actually get is P, so our transformation matrix is 1, 0 and 1, 2. So this would be then our first eigenvector, v1, and this would be our second eigenvector, v2, of our matrix A. You can just, you know, plug it in, multiply it from the right-hand side, and you will see that this is basically an eigenvector. Then what we also need, of course, is we need P inverse for redoing our transformation at this side. So we need to uh, calculate the inverse of that, and this is just 1 minus 1 half, 0 and 1 half. And now we have basically everything together. So we have the eigenvalues, so the lambdas, which we need here for the main diagonal. We have P for this uh, multiplication from the left-hand side, and we have P inverse, the multiplication from the right-hand side to redo this transformation. And we can then basically write down our solution for this 
ODE, which is X of T is identical to 1, 1, 0, 2. So this is here our matrix P, right? So this P here times e to the power of lambda 1, which is minus 1, times t, 0, 0, e to the power of lambda 2, times t, which is a 1, times p inverse, so this matrix here, which is 1, minus 1 half, 0, and 1 half, and with this, we can basically directly get the solution, which is E, oh, I forgot a little bit here at that point formally, of course, this solution is depending on the starting state. So X0 would need to apply it from the right-hand side, of course. Oh, don't forget that. And the entire solution is then e to the power of minus t. So if you do this multiplication of these three matrices with each other, here we get a zero, one half, e minus t, plus e of t, and e of t times x zero. So a little bit lacking space here. And this is then our solution. So what we can now basically see from this solution is that it's again just depending on x0, so our initial state, and we get an explicit solution, so an analytical closed form solution which is just depending on t. So I can just plug in any time value t from the continuous dom domain from t0 to something and find the exact solution of uh, this ODE. And this is the beauty about the linear ODEs, that for a linear autonomous ODE without any input at that point, I can basically write down the analytical exact solution very easily. Here we have limited ourselves to the simplified case that I have either a diagonal A or a diagonalizable A. However, one can also find similar techniques, for example, using Jacobian matrices for matrices which are not diagonalizable but we will not go here into details. The main takeaway message here for you is that if you have a linear autonomous ODE that you are able to solve it analytically. Thank you.